No symptoms of chemical poisoning. That's how local doctors are describing the aftermath of the attack in the Syrian city of Douma on April the 7th. Witnesses explained how it all unfolded to the UN-backed chemical watchdog just an hour or two ago, alongside Russia's representative to the group. Well, our Europe correspondent, Peter Oliver, was across it. Uh, went on for more than an hour, didn't it, Pete? Uh, many witnesses were brought forward, a lot of detail too. Take us through uh, the, the main points that came out. There was a clear message all along, wasn't it? There was a clear message throughout this. If we start with what the, um, the, the words were coming from the Russian representative to the OPCW, the Organization for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons, uh, Alexander Shulgin, he said that that Russia believes that the act that took place in Duma was a provocation. He accused directly the US, France and the United Kingdom of tugging at heartstrings by showing uh, images of, of, of children who had been, uh, as was claimed, affected by a chemical attack. He said that it was and as far as Russia had claimed, was sloppily staged. Uh, Russia doubling down on their message that this wasn't a chemical attack. We also heard from the Syrian representative to the OPCW who said that Syria didn't have chemical weapons, that they'd uh, destroyed those under uh, supervision of the OPCW. Then we started to hear more and more information about the actual scenes that we've seen so many times over our TV screens um, that took place on the 7th of April of this year. Uh, 70 people, we're told, were killed in a uh, chemical weapons attack. Uh, we're told that a mixture of sarin and chlorine were used as part of this attack. Now, we heard from Igor Kirillov, who's the representative of the Russian military, who talked about the device that was supposed to be the um, what provided the chemical attack. He said that the way it was shown in the, the canister that was shown in the video, that's not how a canister that had delivered a chemical agent would have looked. He also uh, questioned the scene in which that canister was found. He said, logistically, that wasn't the way it should have looked. Now, we also, though, heard from one of the well, one of the standout witnesses of this attack, 11-year-old uh, Hassan Diab, he spoke at length about what he experienced on that day. We were in the basement and then heard someone outside scream, go to hospital. We were scared. They started to pour water on me. I don't know why they did this. They told all of us to go into the hospital. I was immediately taken upstairs and they started pouring water on me. Do you remember where it happened? Right here. Where is it? Here it is. They poured water on me. They put me here and then took me upstairs to my mother. That's me in the video, that's me. Yes. Now, Hassan and his father weren't the only witnesses that were brought forward by the Russian delegation. Uh, we also heard from doctors that were on the scene. They said that they treat people that weren't suffering from the type of symptoms that you would expect from a chemical attack. They said that they uh, w did treat people who were suffering from asphyxiation, from smoke inhalation, but nobody that was showed any symptoms of, say, um, a, a chemical substance having been used. Again, very detailed descriptions that were given. We can listen to them now. Around 7 p.m., I was in the hospital's emergency room. Then a person holding a child entered and started shouting, chemical weapons, chemical weapons. The situation in the hospital became chaotic. A lot of people were frightened. They began panicking. People had injuries. They had trouble breathing. But we had patients like that arriving all the time. And the screams, chemical weapons, chemical weapons, 
were used to create panic. This lasted for about an hour. We were treating the patients and sending them home. And we had no fatalities or instances of people suffering from poisonous substances. That's where we are right now. The very latest coming from the Russian side is that they're saying that this was a sloppily staged attempt to show what was a chemical attack when that type of chemical attack didn't take place. Those words exactly used by the Russian uh, delegate to the, the OPCW, the, uh, the Organization for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons, he said it was a sloppily staged chemical attack. Yeah, Peter, thanks for bringing us up to speed there. I say you're uh, watching in there at what was happening at The Hague. Come back to you later. Let's get some more perspective on it from Peter Ford, now former ambassador to Syria, listening in. Uh, no doubt you watched it like we did a couple of hours ago. A lot of witnesses brought forward. What do you make of uh, the testimony there? To what extent does it support what Russia has been saying all along, that there indeed was no chemical attack? Tell us what you thought about what you saw. Mm. Well, I thought it was uh, very convincing, uh, and, and it backed up uh, completely the Syrian and Russian version of what actually happened. Um, and and uh, the video itself, to, to anyone with an open mind, it's clear that what what's going on. Um, but then um, I'm afraid that you know you really need to engage your brain to understand what's what's going on. The skeptics tonight are, are, are going to be saying all these people are false, all these people are going to be dragged in, they were made to say it, coerced to say it. I suppose, as you say, you've got to use your brain on this. There's something else that came in today. The OPCW wanted Russia not to go ahead with this today. The OPCW wanted to wait until it had wrapped up its fact-finding mission. Why would they say that? Why wouldn't they want every bit of information to hand, both what they found on the field there and what Russia had to say from the witnesses it put together, doctors, uh, chemical specialists, etc. Uh, well, I noticed the OPCW uh, didn't complain about a similar uh, episode. Uh, the, the BBC showed uh, alleged testimony from alleged victims in Idlib um, who were making uh, contrary claims to what we've just heard. The OPCW were silent about that. Uh, it seems to me uh, that they have perhaps been listening a bit too much to Washington, London and Paris and um, one begins to worry a little bit about their impartiality. Mm. I mean, when you've got doctors that purport to be on the ground there, uh, witnesses that purport they say they were most definitely there on the scene as it happened, caught up in it, they describe how they were caught up in it. What's international reaction going to be to this, or is it going to be ignored, do you think? What's your gut feeling on it tonight? This only happened a couple of hours ago, of course. Yes, well, it, it will be uh, either, either ignored or attempts will be made to downplay it and to undermine it. In fact, these attempts are already underway. Um, but uh, I think when ordinary people see the, uh, the footage, the testimony, uh, they are bound to be impressed mm. and in fact anybody with half a brain could see that these are credible witnesses but admittedly half a brain is setting the bar very high for most British parliamentarians and most uh, British political commentators in the media. And surely anyone looking on here with an open mind about what may or may not have happened will question the uh, the, the the quickness if you like the urgency for the UK for France and the US to go in and make those strikes. Why so quickly? Why couldn't they wait until the results of all these investigations are going on to more testimony have been heard? It casts more doubt over it, surely. Exactly. What the uh, British media uh, are also failing to point out is that it was Russia and Syria which requested the OPCW mission. They requested it. Britain. America and France have still not to this day confirmed that they wanted the mission to, to go ahead. Mm. And the fact that they bombed uh, the, the very day before the mission were due to arrive, um, I think this looks rather suspicious. Mm. 
Well, aside to this, then, questions about how long uh, the U.S. is going to stay in Syria. Now, U.S. Secretary of State Mattis said today that the U.S. is going to expand its fight in Syria. That, again, contradicts Donald Trump's early desire to leave. I um, mean, he's made various statements about it. As we know, he was going to pull out, then he wasn't, then this happened. Uh, what is the White House' latest strategy, do you think? Uh, I don't think the White House has a strategy. Um, they have different tactics from, from day to day. Um, but to be fair to President Trump, he, he does seem to have a strong inclination to put America first and bring American troops uh, back home and stop wasting trillions of uh, American taxpayers' money. Uh, that's his clear uh, inclination. But of course, the, the deep state in America, the security state, the generals, the political elites uh, are all pulling in the other direction. They want endless war in the Middle East. Yeah. Peter, whether our viewers agree with you or not, it's always very good to have your uh, insight, your experience. Uh, Peter Ford, former UK ambassador to Syria. Thanks for being on RT International Live with us tonight.